So one week past this round open now, and some players actually played in tournaments last week that we have some big names that have actually changed in the rankings in the top 10, not just for the normal rankings, but also mainly for the WTA race to the finals, because there were some big changes there with some big results. So let's go have a look at those results now. There's only one event on the men's side of things last week, and that was in Montpellier. And Bublik, he took out Charge in the final, 5-7-6-2-6-3. He got a nice boost up the rankings. Over on the WTA, we did have two big events. One was a 500, that was in Linz. And Ostapenko beat Alexandrova 6-2-6-3 to lift her second trophy of the year. And over in Thailand, we had Schneider taking on... Zhu beating her in 3 6 3 2 6 6 1 to lift her first trophy of her career. So, some big results there for some players post the Australian Open. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings now. And no change to the main rankings, which Fiontech Fiance staying at number one. Sabalenka at two, Goff at three, Pagula at four, and Rebecca at five. Jabir, she comes in at number six with Zhang at number seven. Vondrusova at eight, Sakri at nine, and Mukova. Rounds at the top 10 for this week, but a couple of those names are playing this week, so sh we should get some big changes, or at least some changes, next week to the top 10. Over the race of the finals for the ladies now, and this is where things have changed, and will continue to change a lot over the next couple of months. Sabalenka stays on top though, with Zhang at number two, but Ostapenko, after winning her second trophy of the year, is now number three in the race of the finals, overtaking Goff and Yastremska, who both get pushed down to four and five. So Ostapenko winning two 500 events to start the season has really helped her ranking. She is the third best player of the year so far. Rabakina, she stays there at number six with Fiontech to go to number seven with Noskova to number eight, Kostruk at nine and Kalinskaya rounds at the top 10 for this week. But with some big 1000 events coming up over the next few weeks, this could have looked a lot different by the start of March. Over on the men's side of things, not as exciting with no changes to the top 10. Djokovic at number one ahead of Alcaraz at number two, with Medvedev at three, Sinner at four, and Rublev at five. Zverev at number six. Now, Runa did play last week, but didn't really add too many points to his total, but is at number seven still. Hercatch at eight, Fritz at nine, and City Pass rounds out the top ten for this week, but we don't have too many huge events like we do on the women's side for the men over the next few weeks, so we might not see too many changes until we go to Indian Wells and Miami in March. Over to the race of the finals now, and again, no changes with Sinner staying at number one, and Medvedev at number two. Zverev at three, Djokovic at four, Rublev at five, Hercatch Catch at six. Diminor comes in number seven with Fritz at eight, Elkris at nine. And Tabillo stays in the top 10 for another week. He outlasts Bublik, who, even though rose up a lot of spots because of his point situation, didn't take that number 10 spot. So again, Tabillo, we're going to celebrate every time he stays in this top 10 because we don't know how long he's going to be there for. But no changes yet. Some of these players are playing next week, though. So we might get a couple of changes next week, but no changes this week for the top 10 race to the finals. So there it is. Only a couple of changes there for the ladies' side. On the men's side, not too much. But like I said, on the women's side, we've got two 1,000 events coming up over the next couple of weeks. This week, we've got Abu Dhabi with some big names playing as well. And also on the men's side, we've got some of the big names coming back over the next few weeks as well. Guys like Medvedev, Sinner, even Alcaraz are playing in the next couple of weeks. So we could see some changes to the rankings before the Sunshine Double, but let me know down in the comments below. What has been the most impressive part of the season for you so far? I mean, Ostapenko winning two titles in the first month of the year is pretty impressive for me. Of course, Sinner winning the Australian Open, that's massive, beating Djokovic to do it. Uh, might be what some of the answers as well, but yeah, Ostapenko winning a few titles to start 2024. That's pretty impressive for mine. Uh, we do get to see her again next week as well. She's also playing in Abu Dhabi. So let's see how far this run can go. But they're the rankings. Not too much to talk about, but a couple of changes to the finals races.